Hey, is this thing on? Are we recording? Can I get a tech person? Oh, for the love of ed tech. Hey, Corinne. Hey, Kara. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm pretty excited about our guest today. We're having Michael on. Yeah, Michael O'Shaughnessy from the Montgomery County Educational Service Center is coming to talk to us. I always like talking to Michael because he's super knowledgeable about so many things and you never know where your conversation is going to end up with him. Isn't that so true? I'm excited. Joining us today is Michael O'Shaughnessy, who is the curriculum supervisor at Montgomery County Educational Service Center in Dayton, Ohio. So hi, Michael. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day. Very busy. Michael is one of the busiest people I know. Yeah, I, I, do, a, I do a thing or two around here. <laughs> just a couple. Just a couple hats you wear. Yeah, just a few. As we start our conversation. Uh, I know that you have had an interesting journey, not only to your curriculum supervisor position, but just into education in general. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. It is, uh, I got into education kind of in a, a non-traditional manner, if you will. I uh, was the last graduating class of Fairmont East back in 1983. I went to Wright State for a year and kind of ran out of money. So I joined the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. So I was in the Marine Corps for six years. I was trained as a aircraft integrated weapon systems technician on F-18. So got to see the world. That sounds very yep, fancy. Yep. Yes. Got to see the world. I've <laughs> uh, been all over the United States. Decided to get out of the Marine Corps and I stayed in California, became a motorcycle mechanic. So I was a motorcycle mechanic for Vance and Hines out in California for a while. Ran out of money because California is expensive. Moved back here to Ohio. Started as a mechanic again. I also worked at Morse Fitness. I worked at UPS and FedEx. Uh, so I did a few things. And yeah. I finally said, it's time to get back to school. So I went back to school to be a material science engineer. That's what I wanted to do to begin with. And when I was in my chemistry mm -hmm. class, the chemistry teacher was having just too much fun. So <laughs> I kind of said, like, well, now this is pretty interesting. Plus, what I was doing is since I was back in school, I was older than pretty much everybody I was in class with. Mm -hmm. They were asking me questions, and I was able to explain it to them. So I'm like, well, now this is pretty interesting. So I checked out uh, that teachers, although we don't get paid a lot, it's not horrible. So I uh, changed my major. Well, I started tutoring at Sinclair, and I got to tutor math and uh, chemistry and physics there at Sinclair. And I said, all right, this is pretty cool. Changed major to education and graduated from UD with a Bachelor of Science in ed Education. Went to Shamanah Julian Catholic High School <clears throat> for uh, six years. I was there. I got my master's in educational technology. Oh, uh, nice. So, And then taught at the Green County Career Center for 11 years. And now I'm in my seventh year here as a curriculum supervisor. What I do like to bring up, though, as part of the uh, nice ed tech story is... The second year I was in education, I knew educational technology was going to be a game changer. I just knew it back then. Uh, you know, this was the 98, 99, 2000 time frame. And I distinctly remember to this day when the principal, Mr. Trainer, walked into our faculty meeting and he looked at all of us teachers and said, you all will check your email at least once a week. <laughs> Can you imagine? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I thought that was rather interesting, you know, and you fast forward today. I don't know how many trainings I've done where we've done uh, Google. It's, uh, you know, work workspace now, online collaboration between several people. I'm doing those trainings, talking about Google Forms, collecting data really easy, Google Sites, people making websites. I mean, back in the day, you had to know HTML coding to be able to get a web page up. Now it's click, click done and now you have you know an e-commerce site up so so i like yeah. to say i tell people i have like eight email accounts that i have to keep track of and if i mm -hmm. didn't have my phone mm -hmm. i couldn't do my job yeah isn't that isn't that mm -hmm. wild the truth and now you just constantly are connected in your hand yep no matter where you go because i remember you know when your phone the thing i love to do was just play snake <laughs> you had games yes yes i remember that i remember back oh when gosh. i had my uh nokia phone that i had to have two external batteries because the phone would only last 
two and a half hours. <laughs> My first phone was a Motorola and it was bright yellow and it was really cool because you could use it as a walkie talkie. <laughs> I think I looked like I worked at a construction yes. site. Yes. And my, my dad would only use the walkie-talkie feature. So we'd be in, like, the grocery store, like in Kroger, and you'd hear this, what are you doing? <laughs> my father-in-law was the same way. It's like, We've come, come on. a long way. Yes, oh yes, yes, we have. It's amazing. That's hilarious. I want to go back just because I'm intrigued a little bit with mm -hmm. the uh, material, mm -hmm. what Materials. Was material science. Material science engineering. Yeah. Science. I, what, what is that? Well, and, like, what, what did you want to do with that? Oh, well, um, thought, I, guess. I thought what was really cool about material science engineering, and I still think it's really cool, is the fact that material science engineers have to be very good at all areas of science. It involves chemistry, physics, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously math, too. But at the time yeah. when I was graduating in 83, uh, composites, mm -hmm. carbon fiber panels and things like that mm -hmm. for cars were just coming into existence. And I said, you know, this is another thing. I'm like, this is the future. And if you look now, uh, what Tesla's all carbon fiber, I believe, their cars, SpaceX, the rocket, all the different materials that are mm -hmm. involved with those. So... Would have been a pretty good material science engineer. Yeah. You would have been good at that, for sure. I haven't worked for, oh, 24 years because what I do is way too much fun. Can't call this work. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, and when you taught, when you first taught, tell me what were you teaching? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was science, but. Yes. Or math. Yes. At, uh, that was at Chama Julian Catholic High School. I was hired to teach uh, physics and chemistry there. Uh, so, those, so that's what I was mm -hmm. teaching. And while I was there, I kept asking for laptops for, for my students, for the classroom. And they kept asking me, mm -hmm. well, what would you use them for? And at that time, I'm like, I don't know. But if you give them to me, I'll find a way to use them. Oh, you know, so I was at that stage where mm -hmm. I just, I didn't know because nobody really knew, but I knew if I had them, yeah. I'd find ways to do it. So I was able to convince them to also purchase sensors from Vernier. Mm -hmm. So we were using uh, what they call CBLs hooked up to TI-83s. Uh, we were using motion detectors and we were analyzing data on the, uh, the graphing calculator. And that's when I said, hey, Vernier has a program that works on a computer. So give me laptops. Very good. So I got yeah. my laptops. Nice. Yeah. Back when everyone was just using laptops for Oh, processing. yeah. No, the first. That's mm -hmm. all that we're used for. Or, you know, maybe a little Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. true. Very, very true. <laughs> nope. You know, but it wasn't, it really wasn't used for anything robust that we really weren't pushing the limits right. of what oh, no. the capabilities were. I started yeah. using those back then and the uh, Microsoft was the big, the big uh, company at that time. And I learned that's where I started to mm -hmm. learn how to code. We started to learn Visual Basic for application. There was a website that did a, an activity, a simulation that uh, talked about conservation of momentum and it was free for like a year then all of a sudden it went away and i'm like oh my gosh what what happened here so i uh got busy and i wrote my own program nice <laughs> so i wrote my own conservation of momentum program and i used it there at cj and it was a, a simulation you had two objects that were there and you were able to give them initial velocities heading towards each other uh, it could be a completely elastic collision inelastic collision so forth so on what it caused was the beginning of all this what you hear about now all these simulations the students could sit there and yeah. run these things over and over and over and over and over on the computer and then we could turn around and go back to the lab on our air tracks back there and actually mm -hmm. physically do it so that was nice so using technology was wonderful yeah. i can remember being in high school doing a physics lab to determine the acceleration due to gravity and what you did was you had this mass hanging off the edge of your desk and this big long like cash register tape through what they call a spark mm -hmm. timer. You turn the spark timer yeah. on and it's just sitting there tapping. Do, 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 and you drop the mass and pff, it puts these marks on your cash register tape. Then you got to get your ruler out and say, is that a mark? Is that a not, not a mark? And you're measuring everything. And it's like, it's it's horrible. Using yeah. Vernier equipment in the sensors and ed tech educational technology, you have like this thing called a picket fence in a photo gate. Students can drop the the picket fence through the photo gate multiple times. They can do linear regressions and quadratic regressions to see the graph on, on the computer over and over and over and over and over again. So it was it was wonderful. I'm like, where was this when I was going through school? 
Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. And I think that sometimes people, people either don't understand how you can incorporate it into some of the subject areas that we, I don't know, you know, you don't automatically place a computer in it when you think of it initially. Mm hmm. But there are so many avenues that you can take incorporation of educational technologies. Absolutely. It's not just it's not just word processing. Yeah. So my big push for EdTech yeah. was using the, the sensors to collect data, analyzing the data using you know my students. I taught them how to use Excel, the spreadsheet, how they could do linear regressions in there. And also, you know, keep in mind EdTech is not just a computer. We were using mm -hmm, calculators, right. we were using TI eighty threes, TI eighty fours. Um we start uh, Fast forward to today when I was the curriculum director out at Valley View, I was able to convince the superintendent to buy the data collection equipment there. And now it, they've moved in what they call LabQuest Minis. So it's a it's basically a, mm. a pocket computer with a nice touchscreen display on it. So, oh, nice. so the students can use the LabQuest Mini the same way I was using a laptop in the classroom. Don't yeah. forget the, the little mm. technology. A, a pencil could be educational technology, technology, too. Yes. Depending on how it's used. Used. Yes. I know that's an important reminder, really. Mm -hmm. And because you mentioned sheets. Oh, yes. Let's let's uh, go down that yep. avenue. Yeah. So first of all, do you have any ideas for utilizing either sheets or Excel with students? Oh, start there. Absolutely. Okay. Keep in mind the, the other side of technology. Uh, I thought this as I, as my years have gone by, everybody's like, oh, no, we've got to have Microsoft Office. I'm like, why do you have to have Office? They go, well, we've right. got to teach them how to use Word. I'm like, well, are you teaching them how to use Word or are you using it to type papers? Because if you're using it to type papers, you can use Notepad for that. Mm -hmm. So my big push Anything. was always to make sure... What are you trying to teach? If you need to teach Microsoft Office because your students are going to go get Microsoft Office user specialist certification, fantastic. But if you just want to teach a kid how to use a, a word processor, there's countless word processors out there that will that will do the job just fine. And those skills are transferable across mm -hmm. different platforms. And I, I think you're right. People get hung up on the yeah, big absolutely. names. Absolutely. They, they, how are they going to function in the workplace if they don't know how to use Word? Well, if they use... Google Docs or another word processor, they're going to be able to dive in there. And the fact is, I'm sure you're going to agree with me on this, is most people do not use 10% of what Microsoft Word can do. You are correct. And that's where uh, Google Apps came from. Google Apps uh, came from yeah. uh, their Google Google Apps way back in the day came from the fact that Google works on that 80-20 work philosophy 80 percent of the time you work for google the other 20 percent mm -hmm. of the time you get to work on anything you really want to so yes absolutely now of course google owns it but hey life goes on at least you get to have fun and do what you want to do sitting in a beanbag chair <laughs> so people took some surveys from from google and they they went around they looked and they said yeah you know 90 percent of the microsoft office users only use 10 percent of its ability so these these google coders they're like well we could take that 10 percent put it as a web app and get it online and use it for free so that's what they did so the 10 percent of what people used word for mm -hmm. is in google docs you know, I'll agree if, you, if you're like doing legal documents and you need to make sure you've got line numbers right and introduce, you, you know, everything's got to be perfect. Sure. Microsoft Word's got all those capabilities of, of doing. But I also have to say Google is coming pretty close. We'll go back to uh, Google Sheets because I can remember when we just started using Google Sheets uh, in the classroom. Uh, one thing as a science teacher that was missing was the ability for it to graph a, a line, do a linear regression. And you know, in, mm -hmm. in science, we're doing that pretty much all the time. If you, you graph graph distance and time or velocity and time, you're going to get some sort of line out of it or something's cooling, heating up, what have you. So you want to do some graphing. You want to get a best fit line. Well, Google Sheets didn't have that. And so I was struggling because I was like, dang it, mm -hmm. we can't use Google Sheets. Got to break out Excel. So we would do, do that. So what did I do? I coded my own little program to do linear regression. So I said like, cool. So as soon as it was ready to go, guess what Google did? They released. They released their own and they updated Google Sheets. I told you, they're spying on you. We're convinced they've got our offices bugged. That happens to us all the time. I mean, we're not building programs, but we're like, it would be really nice if it did this and is. then magically. Yep, yep, yep. There it is. 
sometimes I'll just put things out into the universe, hoping they're somebody's got to be listening <laughs> out there somewhere. Yeah, I'm right. sure more than one person is, but right. We'll not dive so then, into that. <laughs> so as as Google Sheets has gone on, it has grown into some uh, to it, it rivals Excel. So far, uh, most Excel users that I've run into, anything that they say, well, Google Sheets can't do this. I'm like, um, yeah. I can't. Here you go. Let me show you how it can be done. Yeah. So what would you say to teachers who are very hesitant about spreadsheets? Because we've done spreadsheet training for years and we always tell people there's there's always just a handful of like spreadsheet people in the training and everyone else is borderline terrified (laughs) of spreadsheets. So what would you say to those teachers that feel like they don't have a use for a spreadsheet or maybe they're they're not going to be able to use spreadsheets to help them. Right. And do you have any advice? Yes. <laughs> and this is this is general advice for pretty much all things ed tech wise. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to connect because uh, Google Sheets works really well with Google Forms. So I'm going to hook those two together. And I'm going to give a, mm-hmm. a for instance here. Uh, principal uh, at a school needs to get information from their teacher. And he's asking me, he's like, well, how, how do I do this? And I'm like, well, you can use a Google Form. And he looks at me and he's like, a what? Right. I said, yeah, a Google Form. I said, remember that training that you sat in with me, you know, two weeks ago that we talked about Google Forms for, you know, like three hours? He's like, oh, is that what you were talking about? I'm like, yeah. yeah. That, when I was You're checking right. my email. <laughs> Absolutely. So we, we sit down. I work through with a, a Google Form for him. We, we put the questions in there. We talk a little bit about it. We don't dive deep. Uh, we, we set the form up. We, we set the spreadsheet up. He sends it out. He starts getting the information. I get back with them. And this is where the the next step goes. You start showing them how to filter and sort the data that they have right there. And mm-hmm. that's when they're like, oh, my, look at this. <laughs> right. So, yeah, my my long story short here is as soon as a teacher or somebody asks a question on how to use something, that's when they're going to learn. You can mm-hmm. sit in a Google Sheets training yes. for eight hours, but if you don't have a concrete use for it, you're not going to learn it. You're not going to grasp it. You're not going to know it. An English teacher uh, had, was basically in the same same position. She's like, I know I should be able to use Google Sheets to do something here. She goes, but I just don't know how to do it. So what she had was she had a form that she could change the assignment name. And what the students would do is they would go to the form, put their, put their name in there, pick the assignment they're doing, and then upload or actually paste the link to their shared Google document right in the, and write in the form and submit it. Mm-hmm. The form also includes the period number. She was a high school teacher, so she had to deal with, you know, six different periods. So when all that data got into the spreadsheet, I go like, okay, so now you just want to deal with six periods. So watch, filter it for just six periods. There's only your six period people that's that submitted. Let's filter it for just the assignment you're looking for. Now you're looking at just those assignments. And since they pasted a link, the link to their documents right there. So they click on that link and the document opens, they can do whatever they want. Now, some of you might be saying like, well, that's Google Classroom. I'm like, yes, exactly. But that teacher wasn't ready for Google Classroom yet. Mm -hmm. What she was ready for was Mm -hmm. to understand she had a reason to use the spreadsheet and she learned how to use it. And just to finish up yep. with the, the uh, principal that I had talked about, he became a uh, form monster. It seemed about every other week he had a form yeah. going out to the teachers asking questions. That's great. Now, mm-hmm. Forms are addictive. We always say that's mm-hmm. like the gateway mm-hmm. application. If you're, if you're hesitant yep. about getting started with Google Workspace, I guarantee that Absolutely. you have a use for forms. Especially now, because for all the, the, the teachers in the state of Ohio, part of your evaluation is based on data and how you use data in the classroom to inform your decision. Mm -hmm. So if you have Google form set up for like a, you know, an entry ticket or an exit ticket, Mm -hmm. uh, I, Mm -hmm. I say do it as an entry ticket, have three questions about what you talked about yesterday, right? Have it on there. Why the kids are coming in. They know Mm -hmm. they got to log in. They know their forms right there. They answer those questions while you're doing that boring stuff and the administrative part of teaching, like who's here, who's not here, who's getting lunch, who's not getting lunch, so forth and so on. They're answering yeah. those questions. And then when you're ready to start your lesson for the day, you can bring up that Google form and you can look at the, the charts that they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It's going to put it in charts for you. A- absolutely. So like I use science as an example. If I if I just got done telling and teaching them that Newton had three laws and I ask that question and I see 90% of my students think that he has two laws, I'm not going to move on with today's lesson. 
Yeah. <laughs> I've got to right. re recover. Data right. guided instruction. Which is, yep, I'm using yeah. data to inform my, my classroom instruction. And then not only that, since all that information is going into a spreadsheet, you start looking at longevity. So you keep this year's data, you keep next year's data. Right. You talk to your evaluator, say, look, I see a trend here, what's happening. And it's yeah. just, just like that. So you mm -hmm. start becoming a data analyst, whether mm -hmm. you like it or not. You will, yeah. but it's not that difficult. So <laughs> the advice, find that one project that you that you need and then find the tool and learn it because now you have a purpose and you're going to learn it, learn it well. Let sheets work for you. Like mm -hmm. it's a, it's a workhorse. I mean, we don't, we're not big on using technology just for the sake of using technology. You know, we want to use technology to help you solve a problem, help you make your life easier to you know, like improve instruction, drive change in your classroom. So let it work for you. Let it do the all that hard work and the calculations and analyzing the data. I mean, I can remember when I was in the classroom years ago, collecting data for like IEPs and things like that. And it would be a paper. And then you have all of this stuff to tabulate. Yeah. And, you know, you should yep. put it in every day, but things happen. And then you're trying to put in all this data and you're trying to analyze it and you could use a Google form for something like that and it would do all the hard work for you. So we love sheets. <laughs> Absolutely. So I would say I agree with Corinne. You definitely want to let technology work for you. Yeah. And, and you, yes, these paper, I go around to some teachers. I see things, paper and pencil on a, on a, a piece of paper and they're tracking this data i'm like okay so what do you do with that now and they're like mm, i don't know <laughs> like, well let's get it into a spreadsheet because then we can start looking at trends and you know so forth so on well and then but, it can drive like course evaluation and what needs to be tweaked and if you're if you're still adopting curriculums it can absolutely you know drive that too yep. so all right well because we're on the topic of spreadsheets I am going to ask you, what is your favorite <laughs> ed tech tool, tip, or trick for teachers or that you like to share with people? Absolutely. The, the most powerful function you can learn, as we all know, for the spreadsheets, especially for Google Sheets, is the query function. Q-U-E-R-Y. Once you wrap your head around the query function, you, you become super powerful. One of the basic uses uh, that you that you learn how to use the query function is when you have this big spreadsheet of like 140 columns. I can give you an example. The uh, state testing uh, test file that you get, the results, is uh, 140 columns long. Oh, and what's, yeah, and what's really funny is the most important column is column BS. <laughs> yeah, I kid you not. So that's where the point values for all the, the scores are. But you don't, you know, so you're looking at all this data and it's wonderful data to have, but you don't need everything. So I see teachers and, and administrators sitting there and they just start deleting columns. I'm like, that's yeah. going to take you forever. Look, in, in, in three seconds, we can write a query function on another tab and pull just the, just the columns that you want. And then we can even sort it in the order you want and we can filter out what you want. So like if you just want column A, D, F, and, and the BS column, if you will, you can put that into a query function and it will just bring that data. Does it open so you don't have to say, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. yes, it does. It certainly yes, feels it like does. that. To, mm -hmm. to be able to add those conditions where you're essentially filtering all your data automatically is just like mm -hmm. game changer. I just got on the query Absolutely. train like two weeks ago and I was talking to Michael about it <laughs> earlier. And it's phenomenal, it's, isn't it's it? It's amazing. And another thing that we were kind of talking about um, the other day, Kara wasn't here for this, was how when you're using spreadsheets with students, you're also basically teaching them to think mm -hmm. in a coding language. I mean, it, it's, it's like a building block, building blocks of coding. You're using those logic, logical statements and commands and things like that. So I, I feel like there's a connection to be made there that maybe isn't being made in some instances. I'm sure it is in some places, but if, 
Yeah. Yeah. Like the if then statements yeah. or but if mm-hmm. when yeah mm-hmm. ascending these. Yeah. Well, I mean, even the same thing. It's like uh, you know, there's a, a a function called concatenate. Yeah. And it's a big word, but it just means to hook two things mm-hmm. together. But you don't need to use that function. You could actually just in a cell type. You know, like let's say you got stuff in column A, B, and C. You can go into cell D1 and type an equal sign and say A1 and then the ampersand and a quote, comma, space, quote, ampersand, C1 mm-hmm. and hit enter. And what it just did was took those two columns, put them together yeah. with a comma between them. But like like Corinne's saying, that's, that's a logical algorithm. You're going through those mm-hmm. steps, and that's what a, that's what programmers do. Mm-hmm. They're like they need an entry point, they need a process to get through, and they need an yeah. exit point. And that's what that is. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, Kara, like you said, that the if then you have if you have if then. So if this condition is true, then you do this. If it's false, then you mm-hmm. do something else. You can embed mm-hmm. ifs, so you can have nested if statements, and then you can even have a function that's called ifs. I F yeah. S. And what that is, is a set of what you arguments that you put in there is it will run through until it finds the first one that's true. So you yeah. can use an if okay. for teachers. They, they use an if when you're trying to figure out whether they should get like an A, B, C, or D mm-hmm. for letter grade. Because you can say if mm-hmm. cell is greater than 90, A. If greater than 80, B. If greater than. Yeah. So it's just one big long sentence like that. But it's and Google has made it so nice because if you just type an equal sign and just start typing part of the function, yeah, name, it just pops. The help up. box opens up, and then you can click on a link and it brings it up again. You can go uh, click on another link and it takes you right out to uh, the website uh, to get more information about it, see examples of it. So, so many things, and that's another thing that that Sheets has caught on to that kind of caught up to Excel. Excel has a lot of things on their, you know, on the ribbon at the top mm-hmm. and through their menu system. Where Google's menu system, the Sheets menu system, is very, very simple and very straightforward. But it has access through code and yeah. functions to do just about everything. Yeah. So if teachers are interested or at any educator, do you have like a good place for them to go to learn yes. more? The guy's name is Ben Collins. And I believe his website is uh, Ben L. Collins. Mm-hmm. He uh, is a, okay. it's what he does. He teaches spreadsheets. Uh, he does talk about Google Apps script coding. His website is wonderful. He uh, has a weekly email that has uh, a tip on what you could use spreadsheets for. Some of them are really useful. Some of them aren't. Uh, his explanations are, are really good. But like I said, you have to search for Ben L. Collins. Yeah. Because I think Ben Collins <laughs> is a car driver. We'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I'm trying to think. He may actually be the video that I watched about query. It's possible. Yeah, yep. I he's think, one of the first um, ones that yeah. comes up when you start Googling mm-hmm. spreadsheet help. <laughs> yep, Ben L. Collins is, is, is very, like I said, his explanations are great. It, it almost, I, I don't know, but he may have, have been a teacher in the past because as he explains things, he explains them very well, very, very well organized, mm. lots of examples. Uh, and he steps you through. Uh, he was the uh, founder of a convention <laughs> called SheetsCon. And I thought it was oh. phenomenal. Uh, COVID year, it didn't happen. But the year before that, he just put it out there. He goes like, well, we're going to try to do this. And it, it was wow. amazing. Uh, it was all online. So before everybody thought online stuff was the thing, everything was all yeah. online. What what happened was there were so many people trying to join that the host company that he was using to host uh, the conference was crashing. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, he thought there may be, you know, like two, 3,000. Uh-uh. There mm-hmm. were like twenty five to 30,000 people. Wow. He underestimated the love for spreadsheets, apparently. Alice Keeler was one of the speakers mm-hmm. at SheetsCon. Uh, a couple other high, high-level high coders were there. Ben spoke uh, about a couple topics. It was just, it was really, really, really cool. So I was kind of sad that he didn't have, yeah. didn't have one during the COVID yeah. year, but he just figured that he couldn't put it all together yeah. in time to do it justice. Something to keep an eye yeah. on in the future though, for sure. Yep. If you ever hear about Sheets Con, it was a wonderful experience. I, I have, I have the t-shirt <laughs> for that. <too. laughs> oh, oh my gosh. It. Yep. And we mentioned Alice Keeler. Alice Keeler is another person in general that we, we kind of talk about. If you ever see anything from... Alice Keeler, mm-hmm. it, you know it's going to be some good stuff. Great resource for teachers because mm-hmm. most of her stuff is 
designed specifically for teachers to use in the classroom. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Because she's still she's still yeah. in the classroom. Right. So I think that's great. Everything that she talks about, she's she's doing it. She does. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. She's using it in her classroom. And then Eric Kurt. Mm -hmm. Eric yeah, Kurt's we know Eric. <laughs> Yes. He's another one. If you see some from him, it's it's good. He was the classroom and then he moved into where he's at now. Yeah. So and he's got a great website too. It's amazing stuff that you can do for free. So teachers are always looking for stuff mm -hmm. for free. You know, you, you may want to start coding. We know there's code.org and and other other places out there that you can code, but Google Sheets has a script editor in it. Yeah. And you can easily start doing coding right there out of Google Sheets and it's free. Yeah. Which so, is, and you can make some really cool stuff. Yes, yes, you can. You can actually develop a website right out of Google Apps Script. Mm -hmm. You can write standalone scripts so that it's got a web, you know, web address. You go to that address, and it looks just like a website, but it's actually running through Google Apps Script, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is mind blown. Yeah, like they said, minutes, minutes to learn, decades to make. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us today, Michael. It was so great to talk to you. I feel like we learned a lot. It was my pleasure. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our discussion today. If you like our podcast, please don't forget to subscribe to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about our podcast and to access links and resources referenced in this episode, check us out at fortheloveofedtech.org.